And so, um, and, and once they start coming through and they start coming to the ball, our house got very different because I can admit, I said like, <clears throat> around 85, 86, that's when we decided we gonna change the, uh, the ballroom. You know, because, you know, everybody used to come out and sew. And, you know, and um, everything, you know, everything was homemade, sewed and stuff, you know, because you had Amos Pajamas, you had Jory Corey, you had Pepper, Sequins and all that. So we changed that, you know, with the labels. You know, we changed the old ballroom scene. <clears throat> That's why the kids into the labels, the high fashion, the furs. We brought all that to the ballroom. The Ebony's? The Ebony's brought all that. The kids didn't know nothing about no furs. You know, I remember, you know, times when we used to do our madness and stuff, you know, like, Louis Vuitton and stuff. I remember one night we brought the whole Louis Vuitton store to a ball. <laughs> yeah, I heard you stories know, about, like, um... We were stepping out of Louis, Louis Vuitton trunks. <laughs> you know, my kids, all of us, we used to walk around ten to fifteen thousand dollars and be done we had Susan Bennis, Adam Ichi, Ken Sai, Ken Lapidus. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm going back with these names, though, but them high dollar stuff, you know? And um, we changed the whole thing. They used to start no ball until we come. The kids were waiting for that we just started ball until Ebony comes. And we come, when we come, that's when the ball starts. So, like, we changed um... the whole thing. During the part, uh, like, um, you know, like the part in um, uh, Paris is Burning where Dorian Corey is kind of talking about. I come from the old school of big costumes, feathers, and beads. And they don't have it anymore. Now it's all about designers. And it's not about what you create, it's about what you can acquire. It was, it was uh, bugle beads, crack ice, sequins, uh, rhinestones. That's when they came, and we changed all that. Because with Cat, with Cash, Cashmere, as um, Tony and Corby come out, and our homemade bound and sequin, my daughter coming out, Lily Rubin, Susan Bennett, you know what I'm saying? And Martha. She's the president wife wearing. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you got, you, 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 you got all these, you turn one down into five pieces, my daughter says up for that $20,000 dinner. She can't be denied. You know, but then after that, my other daughter, Nikki Barnes' wife, she met her mom, she used to be in my, in my house. Yeah, I remember hearing stories about her, too. Okay. <laughs> when she met her Barnes, she was in the Ebony. It was sickening. We got the most powerful drug dealer in, in New York. We got car bonds with them. So we had all, all, everything we wanted, and we had his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then we got Susan. You know, and so after that, you know, it, it was just chaos all the way around. You know, and so we really made the name for ourselves, but we also, as the years went by, we broke boundaries because enemies were known for making money, selling drugs, and Ebony stuck up too. So the boys knew that you couldn't rob us because we gonna rob you too. You know, so Ebony's had a lot of strong realness boys. I'm talking about, God bless the soul, a lot of my sons that had gone. But we had a, a family man was so tight that you would thought we was, you know, the Black Panthers or something. You know, we carried ourselves just like that. You know, we had discipline, we were thorough, we knew what we wanted, we were ashamed, we were out of the car, but we didn't carry ourselves like gay men. We carried ourselves like straight niggas, but we liked the guys. Yeah. You know, and so, it didn't happen to me. I feel that in the late 90s, that's when they started letting like drag queens into this house, like really, flamboyant drag queens, you know? Right. But in the, in the early days, no. That was, a, that was like, like, forbidden <laughs> You so know? So really, like, that when it became, no, no. like, um, 
with girls such as Octavia and Modavia, they were like people that were like they were people that that you know like they kind of hung around or like were cool, but they weren't like in the house. So like, was like the first when did like the first like the fe first female figure mother come? Oh my God! The first from out my house or like the first female mo mother to come into the house. Period. Well, it gotta be. Oh, you know what? Believe it or not, the first female mother for the house of Ebony. I want to say, um, Shania. Judge for me, Shania. Because we never had a female, a female figure. We always had witch queens. So, so Sanaya <laughs> was the mother all the way up until Richard was? No, uh, no. We never had a, I would say, if you say female-wise, Shania was the first female, really, to represent the house of Eddie as a mother. Because all the other mothers besides Richard, Richard's the founding mother. You also had Kitty, Kitty uh, Fry. I mean, Salter was the mother at one time. You also had Lonnie was the mother at one time. You know, and they was Bush Queens. You know what I'm saying? Ebony's never really had a feminine uh, mother. They always had a Bush Queen for a mother. Until, until Shania came. So really, like, we've only had two mothers in the house. I mean, we only had two female figures. Then that's Sanaya and Shanice. That's amazing. Really? <laughs> Cashmere was just a member. She was just my daughter. Cashmere was another mother. She never had a title because in, in, in my era, we didn't have all these titles and chapters. It was just one mother, one father, one emperor, and one prince. No, they didn't even have a prince today because Raymond was the emperor of the House of Ebony. And that was it. So you said like the, late, had, the late 90s is really when y'all started letting like, was when she first came into the house? Yeah, yeah, because we never had all these different chapters. We never had all that. It was just me and Richard as mother and father. That was it. Oh, wow. Yep, all of my kids, was I was their father and Richard was their mother. We never had all this extra stuff that they have now. And so for so many years, like, all the houses just had one mother and father. Right. But yeah, um... So we really didn't have all of that. All this is like really the last 15 years came about. I've only recently um, heard about, you know, the house like roughly, like I, he I heard about it in the 90s, but I never knew that it was, um, you know, really just a full out butch queen house. Especially- Yeah, that's why it was, a, that's why we dominate realness so bad because it's a realness house. Okay, so like, would and you now, say, so what? So, so you said that basically, like when you started the house, it was like what house were you in beforehand, or were you in the house? I never, I never. We are. Oh, I've been at Ebony for thirty-seven years now. Oh, okay. Yeah, never been in another house. You know, it definitely ain't going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> it lay me down. I'll die Ebony because I'm a true Ebony. You know, I started this house thirty-seven years ago. So. You know I ain't going nowhere. This is my family. I love my family. Okay, so like, do you think that like um, the premise of the house have changed within the the last roughly the last twenty or so years? And like, do you think like do you think um, 
what it means to be an ebony has changed or should it have changed at all? I think the whole dynamics of the house changed because the kids these days, I think they don't do the research before they come into the family. I think they don't know the history of just not just my family, uh, boardroom period, because, you know, a lot of people don't know, boardroom go back to the 30s, 1930s. Right. Yeah, because I did, you know, yeah, and, I did research in regards to, like, that it was like the Savoy ballroom of, like, Harlem, right. and just things like, like, things like that, and even beforehand, where they had, like, like, With you know, cakewalks during, like, the antebellum slave period, so it was like, right. yeah. To see that the uh, the community, the gay community, took over after they used to have the hustle ball, the pimps and, and, and prostitute ball, the hustling ball. You know, that's when that's when the balls for the gay community came right after that. <laughs> cities who have situations where guys who call themselves max or pimps, you know what I'm saying, who wants to be glamorized, who wants to be famous, who wants to show all the other players that, hey, I'm the top player in the country. I got the baddest hoes. I got the slickest clothes. I got the beautiful shoes. Other players sit back and recognize that and say, look at Joe Blow. He made a come up. He's shining. Look at his hoes. His hoes is in pocket. You know, these bitches, you know what I'm saying, is getting it up for him. They socking it to his pocket. They dropping out their cock and putting it in the pimp sock. <laughs> Come here, they be like, man, we know this, this, this is over to come here to football. 
you know, because we don't have all that politics here. You know, and we don't, we, we, the lions here, we let the kids know if one person in your house fights, your whole house is barred. And so that's what we do here. It's just too much politics these days. People take it too serious, you know, because at the end of the day, just don't pay our bills. That's true.